Good evening, everyone. I believe we are live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, my name is Angela McArdle. I am the chair of the National Libertarian Party, and I'm excited to share with some share some updates with you guys tonight about what we've been doing at the national level, um, challenges we faced, things that we've accomplished, and everything that we're hoping to achieve, you know, over the next over the course of the next year and leading up until the 2024 election. So we're one year into a new administration and our members are interested to hear what we've been working on. I know a lot of you have reached out. Uh, some of you have answered questions, asked questions, and, and you want to know what's in store for the future. I'm excited to share some highlights with you, you know, what we've done, what our vision is, where we're going, and how we plan to get there. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes that just doesn't translate into a pithy tweet or a social media graphic um, or even in an even an officer's report, but it's meaningful work and it has to be done. We've been working diligently behind the scenes to refine our messaging over the last year, onboard new volunteers, build a system that account, can account for long-term strategic planning. That's something that I talked about a whole lot in my chair race. The old LP wasn't equipped to implement a long-term vision, and that's one of the things that we're working to do, and we're still very much committed to it. Let's dig in a little bit internally before we jump to the more exciting outward facing parts. Um, we recently finished a deep dive with a consultant on our customer relations management software to find out we're not properly equipped to manage all of our fundraising and marketing needs at the national level or to manage the needs of our state affiliates. Uh, everyone uh, colloquially knows this as a CIVI CRM. Those of you who don't pay attention to internal party politics are probably not familiar with this. While we're working to correct the deficiencies and repair some data that was damaged in last year's data migration, everyone is eager to jump to the best solution right away. But we have to put in the work to clean up our data first. And our staff is hard at work doing that. And we're fortunate to have a skilled CTO in Andy Bukovich, someone who has a very steady hand, who can guide us through this process without making snap judgments that will cause us long-term pain and suffering. Uh, so that's what's been going on with the data and technology uh, part of our operation. Membership has dipped during the last year, which is normal at this point in the election cycle, but it might also be related to some of the technological challenges we've faced, some of the things that I just described. Um, our cheerful, hardworking membership director, Matthew Butts, has worked to contact thousands of members and encourage them to renew. I want to thank him for his tireless efforts and his unflappable good attitude. Matthew Butts is a great asset to the Liberty Movement, and I'm super glad to have him. Our marketing team, uh, Carrie Eiler and, and Matthew Hudson, under the direction of our executive director, are giving LP.org a much needed facelift and building out a launch um, to some, of some totally new merchandise this summer, which is really exciting. Our merchandise rebrand is long overdue, but it is happening. So thank you to everybody who's been helping out with that effort. Our fundraising director, Luke Troxel, has been working on two exciting projects that are gonna launch in June, and we'll be including partnerships with some of our biggest social media influencers and our supporters. Uh, I don't wanna spoil all the surprises, but we'll have some really good announcements in the month of June. Uh, and we hear a lot of requests and some of those requests are being granted. Our ballot access committee has been meeting regularly to calculate the needs of our state affiliates. And I've been helping them build relationships with other minor parties to make the costs of ballot access more attainable. After the results of the 2020 election, we're facing a really challenging ballot access year, but we're absolutely ready and willing to rise to that challenge. Bill Redpath has recently launched a very successful signature gathering campaign in Arkansas, and we thank Bill very much for his hard work. We've had to invest time in troubleshooting some deeply entrenched problems within our organization, and I believe that the time that we spent fixing those problems was well spent. We dealt with some internal sabotage, lingering problems from the past administration, and it's been my job to handle them as gracefully as possible, to not call people out publicly, and to just really you know, work to overcome it and to rise above it. I have to walk a fine line of keeping the members informed while respecting the confidentiality of former and current staff. For, so for those of you who've reached out to me with really pointed questions about things that have happened, if you've been frustrated or disappointed that I haven't spilled all the details and given you the dirt, that's why it's really like on me to respect everyone's privacy, to not drag people through the mud publicly and to just be better than the people who want to drag us. 
I'm grateful for the hardworking, dynamic people we have on our staff. Um, all the people I've mentioned, also Drew Reha, Matt Thexton, David Aitken, all the other team members who don't hold really public facing positions. They're still incredibly important and they help everything. Um, they help to make everything that we do possible. Our hardworking executive director, Lainey Houston, uh, who is also going to be coming on later for some Q&A, has put project management in place and helped our staff form new habits to boost productivity and to foster accountability. Finally, this is a really important thing, and I'm really glad and grateful that we have it. We've started to understand the why of what we're doing, how much time projects take, and what results they bear. This is really critical to understanding which fundraising and membership tactics work. So those of you who are concerned about fundraising and membership, I'm very confident that things are going to be looking better over the summer, and this is going to be a big part of it. I want us to be successful. I want us to win elections. I want us to be a party that candidates are proud of. That's what we're going to be working on. We're planning to hyper-focus on strategy over the summer, equipping our candidates and campaign managers to run successful campaigns, boosting our issue coalitions, and our policy engagement. Looking forward, we're going to build off some of the exciting wins that we've had uh, over the last 12 months. So Rage Against the War Machine rally drew a crowd of about 3,000 people to Washington, D.C., which is really unprecedented for a libertarian party activism outside of state conventions um, and national conventions. It was fantastic, right? We drew people in to hear from some of our strongest anti-war advocates like Ron Paul, Dan McKnight, uh, Dan McAdams, and Scott Horton. We made some incredible partnerships through the rally, like the People's Party, like Free Assange uh, at Julian Assange, brother, his brother, Gabriel Shipton, No to NATO, the European movement to end NATO expansion, Dan McKnight of Bring Our Troops Home and Defend the Guard. That's legislation that's meant to curb the president's ability to conduct undeclared wars. We'll continue to advocate for the Defend the Guard legislation in all 50 states, and we've launched an internship to help support this legislation through grassroots political organizing. We're calling it um, our summer activism, the Decentralized Rally, and issuing a call to action to get 3,000 people across the country to lobby their elected officials for Defend the Guard legislation and for Second Amendment rights. We supported Gabriel Shipton by driving our members to fill the screenings of Ithaca, a movie about Julian Assange's unjust imprisonment and the toll it's taken on him and his family. And we'll continue to spread the word that Julian Assange should be free. And our hearts go out to his father, his wife, and their children. I'm excited to announce that we're going to be continuing a partnership with No to NATO, a European anti-war group that shares our vision of seeing NATO disbanded. We're just starting to work on a joint event. Maybe it'll turn into an international peace summit to call for the disbanding of NATO and to call for peace and diplomacy between nations. Many thanks again go out to all of our rally partners, but especially the People's Party and their chair, Nick Brana. I'm looking forward to working with them on ballot access challenges in addition to all of our other cool coalition ideas. We're in the early planning stages of another rally. So that is happening. Um, and we'll be sharing updates on our next event next month. Very excited about that. We also celebrated several successful candidate wins last year, and we're equipping ourselves to celebrate many more in 2024. We're building out candidate resources so we can create more local wins like City Councilman Bill Schultz in Kentucky and Mayor Aaron Lamb in Colorado. Uh, I reached out to Aaron to see what kind of cool things he had accomplished as mayor, and he had some really exciting updates as mayor um, of Keens. I believe it's Keensburg, right? Uh, he's been able to remove the prohibition on backyard chicken egg sales, which is very cool. He repealed his city's COVID-19 disaster declaration, very impressive, and passed a resolution declaring town support for the preservation of Second Amendment rights. Local elections are powerful opportunities to remove burdensome regulations, cut taxes, and nullify tyrannical laws from higher levels of government. I cannot stress enough how important local elections are. If you haven't heard from your state chair about a regional training, please reach out. And also please reach out to your region reps. You can find out how to get candidate training set up in your area if no one has already started that. I'd also like to thank Dave Benner and our fabulous social media team for bringing us to new heights in the past year on social media with over 103,000 new Twitter followers in the last year. We had 12.6 million impressions um, on Twitter in the month of May, and the, we still have one more day in the month. Our Instagram has also gone through an incredible transformation over the last year. If you don't follow our Instagram yet, please do. I believe the handle is Libertarian Party Official. It is absolutely gorgeous. Great work there. 
We have several exciting events coming up this summer. The National Libertarian Party will have a tent at Porkfest with speakers, activities, and a bar. We'll also be hosting children's activities in the morning, trying to really put it out there that we are a family-friendly, pro-family um, movement. We'll also be at Freedom Fest again this year with another main stage talk, a VIP uh, donor reception, and a booth in the exhibitor hall. We're still planning all of that out, but it's looking really incredible and trying to plan something extra special for our donors this year. It takes a lot of work to make these events happen and to keep everything else running while we're working these events. If you're interested in working for the cause, we'll have a few positions opening up soon, and we have two internship positions available for the summer. Make sure you reach out to us through lp.org. Uh, you can go to the bottom and click contact. Just contact the LNC and we'll get your information over to our executive director. We're also supporting an ambitious project to launch Libertarian Party college chapters through the Youth Caucus. So if you're in college and you're interested in starting a chapter, reach out so we can get you in touch with Teddy Gherkin, the Youth Caucus chair. He is an absolute powerhouse and you will love working with him. Overall, I'm still very much in support of the vision that I ran on. Supporting local campaigns in order to grow political experience and capital, supporting a presidential race in order to raise awareness and grow a grassroots movement. The two go hand in hand. We can win elections and educate people at the same time. It's a lot of work, but it's worthwhile work. This country was founded on incredible principles. At the time of its founding, it was the most radical political experiment to have ever taken place. So please support this vision and work by going to lp.org and donating. Sign up to be a member if you haven't done that already for $25 a year or just $5 a month. Let's spread the message of liberty. Let's grow the movement. Let's free Assange and let's jail the Epstein co-conspirators. You know that needs to happen. So that's, uh, that's what I've got planned for you in updates. I want to go ahead and bring on our lovely executive director, Lady Houston, so that she can help me field some Q&A and... Uh, find out what the members had to ask us. Hey there, Lainey. Hi there. Thank you so oh, much. I can't for... hear you. All right. Technical difficulties. Can you hear me now? And for everyone wondering, yes, we did do a sound check beforehand. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, can you hear me now? Nothing, Nothing yet. I'm going to blame the CIA. Yes. Um, all right. Um, I can hear you all right, Angela. All right. So Lainey is going to workshop that. And I'm going to leave her sound on so that I can hear her when she eventually comes up. Oh, someone else says they can hear. All right. It's going to be me, not her. <laughs> Clown show on my end. For those of you who can hear me, this is just. And great. I'm plugging in headphones and now I can hear. We Maybe. can hear. Can you hear yep. me? Excellent. I can hear you. It was my okay. end, not her end, but we'll still blame the CIA. Yes. That of the simulation. One of them is trying to stop us. Um, with that, uh, thank you so much for walking through all the exciting things that are on the horizon. I know we've been getting increasing um, amounts of questions from members um, as people look ahead and the presidential race of 2024 starts to heat up. At the very beginning of this, you opened with some comments around um, our tech platform and our tech stat. What is, or the first question that we have from members is, what is your long-term data strategy for the party? That's a really good question. I think it's a question actually that we should probably both answer. So what I want is for us to have a viable CRM that manages our data in the most professional long-term long -term way possible. What we've got to do right now is we've got to work on, unfortunately, the short term which is to clean things up. Uh, we need clean data. Uh, after that, we're going to have to assess whether or not our CRM is, is something that can be fixed or if we're going to have to move. And, and that's like a painful conversation that a lot of people don't want to hear because I respect that they've invested a lot of time and energy into our current system. But we have to ultimately do what's going to meet the needs of, of all of our affiliates and very importantly, most importantly, meet the needs of our national staff. If, if we can't properly fundraise and and maintain membership data and records, you know, like we're not doing our job. So we're going to do whatever it takes to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll just comment a bit. Uh, as you mentioned, um, we have an incredibly uh, hardworking and multidisciplinary team um, that is working 
to uh, identify all the uh, all of the solutions at our disposal in order to make sure that our platforms and our tools are as strong as possible. And when I think about data, of course, we have to get the fundamentals right. That's making sure that everything from, as you mentioned, An Angela, our national staff is able to do the fundraising we need to to fuel all the exciting projects of the party. But something I'm really excited about in the next chapter of our tech uh, story is we need to be freeing up the ability for state affiliates to rock and roll, right? Right now, the way our systems are set up, um, it's sort of uh, bottlenecked around national. Um, and I'm really excited to see that as we've been working with outside consultants and of course, the incredible people who've been working on this project for months and years, that there's some easy steps we can take to really put not only data, but features in the hands of IT directors, membership directors, political directors in all of our state affiliates, and they can push that down to their counties. So that's coming around the corner. And I think that's it's going to um, give everybody a whole uh, a whole lot more control over um, you know the opportunities to grow freedom. And what's exciting there is you know really that's just the fundamentals. If we're nailing this, what we have an opportunity to be doing is uh, growing the party, growing membership, making sure our message is getting out there, being the authority on what it means to be a libertarian and be a freedom lover, and how we're changing the conversation and moving the Overton window. That's the real data strategy I'd like to see us get to. So I'm glad we're starting to clean up the fundamentals before we can get there. Absolutely. And in speaking of that, I know that um, data is just one piece of it. You have um, a long-term vision for the party. Uh, one of our members is asking if you can expand a little bit more on your vision for the party over time. Absolutely. In fact, I am going to share something, share screen that I've been working on. Share entire screen. Maybe. Bear with me, everyone. We're getting the full spectrum of remote work challenges on the live stream tonight. There we go. Here we go. I mean, this is really what, what we talked about when we were running the new administration. Like, what, what do we want to do? We want to raise awareness at the national level. We want to support state affiliates. We want to support local candidates. Uh, we absolutely do have a vision. Over the next week, I'm going to be working with the rest of the LNC to really fine tune it and make sure that the steps that we're taking now, the, the everything that we do, right? All of our votes, uh, every decision we make, that it pushes us towards the vision that we all ran on. Uh, we want, we believe the presidential election is, is an opportunity to run a national information campaign that's going to grow and energize our grassroots movement. It should support down ticket candidates. Uh, we care very much about local elections. Those are valuable opportunities for candidates to run in winnable races. They build real world political experience and, and they're able to stand up for freedom at the local level. That, those are the things that we need in order to have a prosperous libertarian future. We have a four year activity cycle. During, during midterms, um, you know, we focus on running candidates, but we're obviously not invested in a presidential election. During off years, we should be focusing on policy and, and training. This year, for example, is an off year, 2023. Presidential year, we're focused very much on growing our party and supporting our presidential candidate. There's a lot that goes into it, but those are just some highlights. Uh, so yeah, help us fulfill our long-term vision um, of implementing libertarian policies and solutions across the United States and living in a decentralized world where we have less people over our heads. That's that is just a little bit of my a uh, little bit of my vision there. And remember to donate so that we can get, make that happen. We've got uh, a little bit on numbers here. Three, we have a little over three hundred elected libertarians in the United States, and. 625 libertarians that ran for office in 2022. I would love to see us double our numbers. Yeah, and um, I'm going to uh, really uh, lean in on the shameless plug to please donate so we can make that vision possible. And if you want to uh, celebrate that vision and help shape that vision, um, we've got uh, coming up sooner than you think, one year from now in Memorial Day, weekend of 2024, um, we are headed to the National Convention in DC. How does a uh, someone become a delegate if they're interested in doing that, Angela? Oh, you need to join your state party. So you want whatever state you're in, it's, you know, like California ca.lp.org. It might be, a, I don't remember what Colorado is, lpco.org. I might have just butchered that. What's Washington? Do we know Washington? 
think lpwa.org. Um, there we there, go. There's quite a few. In fact, you can navigate to all of them from our website. So you don't have to memorize the dot coms, the dot orgs um, and the different nuances. So feel free to go to lp.org and you can join your state affiliate. Um, and uh, what are some of what's the sales pitch of why someone should invest the time, um, energy and, and money to become a delegate? You get a say in who runs our national party and at the next election, at the next convention, you get a say in who our presidential candidate is. Also, our national conventions are a blast. They're a ton of fun. You get to meet people from all across the country, some of the hardest working libertarian activists, people that you see online. Meet your Twitter friends in person. Um, it's it's a ton of fun. And yeah, it's like a, it's a really meaningful thing too. When you get involved locally and you make a difference, it's like mm, you get you know you get a taste for what you could accomplish at a bigger level. So let us help you get connected. Let's let's make it possible. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of which, last week we did a live stream where we introduced Clint Russell as our first ever messenger in residence. And we asked you all to reach out to us if there was anyone else you wanted to hear from and to help shape our messaging. Uh, right now, our convention oversight committee is working incredibly hard on identifying the right speakers to speak at convention. So we absolutely want to hear from you. If you send a little email to info at lp.org, we'll make sure all of those get sent to the committee. And I believe their meetings are open so anyone can show up and just give their thoughts on who they would want to hear speak uh, at our convention. Um, and speaking of events, the LP is headed to Freedom Fest again this year. We are so excited. Team LPHQ will be showing up in Memphis in a very big way. And I'm excited to be moderating a panel where we get to interview you and discuss our freedom opportunities over the next year. What other speakers are going to be coming to Freedom Fest? Who are we excited to be sharing that stage with? Okay, so we have a couple that we haven't announced yet. We want to save the save the big announcement for Freedom Fest. But I can tell you that Maj Touré has agreed to be one of our main stage speakers, which is really exciting. And so has Hannah Frakeman of Rebel Educator. Uh, she does really incredible work in the education sector, just like Corey DeAngelis does, um, but in a different way. So, so I'm really excited to be to be partners with them on the main stage and to help talk about all the cool things we're doing for Liberty. Yeah, absolutely. And both of them, obviously, I think Maj is very well known in our community. Um, he runs a fantastic organization. And um, Hannah also is uh, really trying to help get the word out about alternative education through her own or organization, which is very up and coming. So please join us for that. That's going to be July 12th through the 15th in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and uh, they are also looking for volunteers. So if you're local, please uh, let us know and we can connect you with that team. Um, on that note, um, we've been talking a lot about messaging, uh, of course, over the past year, and we, we have a really um, serious question from one of our, our members um, who is also inspired uh, to, to see the LP uh, have a different um, uh, approach to messaging. And they, they uh, asked a lot of questions about uh, how our messaging has uh, shifted since March of 2020. Particularly, they say, in March of 2020, during the biggest assaults of our civil rights since the Vietnam War draft and our economic livelihood since the New Deal, the LP mostly stayed quiet during that time. What steps have been taken since the Reno reset to make sure this doesn't happen again with the next manufactured crisis? Got it. So there's a lot to say on this. I mean, the people that we have in charge of messaging right now are, are really bold and, and fearless and not going to back down on anything like that. And I think that the people who run the LNC right now are the same way. You're not going to see anything like that come out of us. Uh, the, the war in Ukraine has been something that has been really tough to talk about because when we say that we're anti-war and we don't want the United States involved in this war, we get a lot of pushback. People say, oh, that's just terrible. Like, you don't care about the people in Ukraine. You know, we should do everything we can. And we've taken a really strong anti-war approach. And we've been as compassionate as we could be, but as unapologetic in our approach as possible. Like, we are, we are anti-war to the core. And, you know, this is not quite on the same level as shutting the entire country down, but it is in the same vein of something that you've got to take a strong stand on. And, and you just hope that later on down, people will see, as they look back in history, they'll see that you are always on the right side. And going forward, it's going to be really up to the delegates to make sure that they elect people who are going to take strong positions like this and, and come from a place of integrity and be in alignment with the platform. Uh, and so to that, it's like, it's up to you, the membership, to make sure that you hold future LNCs accountable. 
And um, another another messaging question I think that um, has has been coming up is, um, in fact, actually I'm I'm going to ask one for for you, Angela, as well. Um, are there any uh, manufactured crises you see on the horizon that you want to comment on, and, and anything that we're doing to make sure that we're staying ahead of that? I mean, I don't know how manufactured it is, but well, I'm sure that politicians actually are going to try to manufacture a crisis. I, I don't doubt that there are going to be neocon politicians who want to start warmongering with China. They've already started to sort of beat the war drum, especially over the potential conflict with Taiwan. And so we've just got to stay strong on that in our anti-war position. We've got to say, you know, we advocate for diplomacy. You need to reach out to China, see if there's some other compromise you can find. What do they really want? Is it just a land grab? Are they are they looking for recognition? Are they looking for for resources? Like, can we make it happen some other way? And, you know, if all of that gets lost in the sauce and it's just that the United States doesn't care about or the the Libertarian Party doesn't care about Taiwan, you're so evil. We're going to have to take it on the chin. We're going to do our very best. We're going to take it on the chin. And when people look back in history, they will see that we were we were on the right side calling for peace. That's the best we can do. And so much of the party's focus over the past year has really been about shifting the Overton window and um, making sure these conversations are, are talked about. Uh, one of the biggest times that happens in a four-year cycle is actually during the primaries. And we have some really interesting candidates that are popping up in all of the different parties. Um, let's uh, wrap this up on kind of a fun question from one of our members. RFK Jr. is not running as a libertarian, but in recent weeks, many libertarians have been publicly appreciative of a lot of his ideas. Assuming he does not become the Democratic nominee, do you see any political strategies for the LP to collaborate with him and his coalitions within the Democrat Party, um, either expressly for 2024 or a longer term? Absolutely. I, I went on Children's Health Defense TV, uh, which is like their their YouTube, probably not YouTube, maybe maybe a Rumble or Odyssey podcast uh, earlier in the year to promote the Rage Against the War Machine rally. We're definitely aligned on a lot of medical freedom issues, and I'd be happy to, to join forces with them to further that cause later this year, next year, really any time. I think one thing I would remind libertarians to, to do is to be a little bit gentle with RFK Jr. He, like a lot of other people, went through quite a red pilling process throughout 2020. And he may not be fully on board with us yet, but he's coming to Porkfest. He's a, he knows who we are. He's trying to court our vote. It's our job to push the Overton window. It's our job to help persuade people. So even if he's not running, even if we're not going to vote for him, you know, we should we should court his opinion and try to persuade him to be as libertarian as possible. Well, I think there's definitely a lot of exciting twists and turns we can expect over the next summer as primaries start to heat up and um, a lot of uh, exciting things coming down the pike just in the Libertarian Party camp. Um, so with that, I will just encourage everyone, uh, if you continue to have questions, this is not meant to be a one-time thing. Um, we've been really excited to hear a, um, a lot more people speaking up through info at lp.org. And uh, tonight kicks off our Member Appreciation Week in which we're excited to hear from you and um, really help understand how we can be shaping the party not waiting for a convention. Um, we want to hear your feedback and uh, and learn you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly of um, what it is we can be doing better as a party. And I'm so glad we've got some great leadership um, driving the way. Is there any closing thoughts you want to wrap up with here, Angela, before we end? I would just want to encourage everybody to get active in your state and local affiliate. If you, if you are already active, fantastic. I thank you so much for that. But we really need all the boots on the ground right now. As we go into election season, our candidates are going to need support. So make sure you reach out, get, get involved, get to a candidate training, help us set those up. If you want to see a future where we don't have mandates and lockdowns again, where we don't go to war with Ukraine, with Russia, with with China like we need more people who are libertarians to get active to speak out like you, you never know you may be the voice you may be the person that goes viral and stops a war on social media like the world is so wild right now you'd never know it, it could be you so so don't hesitate get involved it's so true we'd love to have you thank you so much um, Angela and thank you to all of our members uh, have a great night everyone good night